Hi, I'm Dallas Dickinson, Director of Production on Star Wars The Old Republic, the new story-driven MMO from BioWare and LucasArts. Today I'll be guiding you through the blazing deserts of Tatooine, where a team of Sith archaeologists hunt for a lost research facility buried deep beneath the sands. This is a mission you would undertake around level 25 or 26 during the course of the game. We'll be watching from the perspective of the Sith Sorcerer, an advanced class for the Sith Inquisitor. Leading up to this point, the Sorcerer and his companion Kem Val have been on a hunt for artifacts that can help the Sith locate a long-abandoned Zerka research facility. Having found the artifacts, the Sorcerer is about to check in with the research team using a nearby holo terminal. It's good to see you, my lord. My team's still searching for the Zerka base, but we've hit a snag. Lord Silva flew a speeder into the Dune Sea, but we lost the tracking signal in an energy storm. Silva was summoning lightning. Why would Silva go out there alone? Lord Silva was following a dream. He told me the Sand People and their spirit guides were the key. He was looking for some sort of compass. If he can't take the heat, he shouldn't have left the base. Maybe, but at the very least we need to know. Find the spirit guides and find him. When you have answers, come to our forward outpost. Otherwise, I don't know how this mission can succeed. So the leader of the expedition has gone missing, and it's up to the sorcerer to find him. But before he can do that, he has to check his map. See that circle in the bottom right corner of the map? Circles like this indicate that the player's objective is located somewhere within this radius. After checking his map, the sorcerer knows where he needs to go. However, this looks like it's going to be a long walk. Fortunately, he can save himself some time by using his speeder bike, one of the personal vehicles that players will have access to as they progress in the game. During their travels, players will gain access to a number of different vehicles. These provide a substantial speed boost, allowing you to more easily explore the many worlds of the Old Republic. Seeing a group of sand people who may have the compass he needs to find Lord Silthar, the sorcerer hops off his speeder and readies himself for battle. The sorcerer stands at a distance and charges a powerful chain lightning attack, which will send bolts of electricity through multiple enemies that are standing near each other. As Kemval rushes into melee combat against the Sand People, the Sorcerer continues his barrage of lightning attacks with a series of lightning strikes. Though the Sorcerer has made quick work of the first two Sand People, they've knocked him down to about half his health. He'll have to be careful as he takes down the last of them. The Sorcerer uses Whirlwind, trapping the Sand People guide in a powerful wind vortex. What's this? Blaster fire streaks in from behind the Sorcerer. An Imperial operative and her companion have joined the Sorcerer in the fight. The operative is one of the Imperial Agents' advanced classes. Now that the Sand People have been dealt with, the Sorcerer begins to seethe, drawing on the dark side of the Force to replenish his health. Since both of these players are on the same mission, the Sorcerer invites the operative to start a group with him. This will make the mission easier for both of them. Party members' health and energy bars, along with those of their companions, appear on the left side of the screen. Now to search the Sand People's remains for the compass. Looks like the Sorcerer has found the compass and can now go find Lord Silthar. He does this by selecting it from his quest items inventory screen. Quest items are conveniently stored separately from the rest of your gear. The Sorcerer and the Operative both hop on their speeder bikes and make their way towards the location marked on their map. It seems our missing Sith Lord is somewhere inside this cave. In order to find him, they need to fight their way through any sand people along the way. The operative begins the fight by throwing a corrosive grenade, which covers the sand people in an acidic green substance and damages them over time. The sorcerer puts up a static barrier, which surrounds him in a shield of pure electricity that absorbs an incredible amount of damage. With the last of this group of sand people down for the count, 
the group can move deeper into the cave. Seeing another group of sand people ahead, the operative lets loose with a carbine burst, which strikes multiple enemies with a wave of weapons fire. Once the operative stops firing, the sorcerer unleashes force lightning on an unfortunate cave keeper. The operative and the sorcerer's companion character throw grenades in to start the fight, greatly weakening the cave keeper in the process. As with the last group, these sand people are no match for two of the Sith Empire's finest. Now to talk to Silthar. As this is a group conversation, each player will be able to select his or her own dialogue choice. Once the selection is made, a randomly generated number between 1 and 100 will appear near to the player's portrait. The character with the highest number is the one who speaks. You will hear my last words. Slowly. You're not going to die, my lord. It is kind of you to lie. The Force called me into the desert. I sensed what Circa found. An alien power. I thought the Sand People would know the land's secrets. I murdered them. Stole their thoughts to find this cave. I knew victory before they destroyed me. Is there any way I can help? My journey here was not for nothing. Zerka built its base over a site from the natives' myths. A forbidden land. The paintings in the cave show the way. Find them. Record them. Gola and his men, they... <sighs> Time to die. Goodbye, Silva. So soon. So soon. The sorcerer wins the role and is elected to finish off Silthar. However, because the players are rewarded according to their intentions, our operative receives light side points for her personal decision to spare him. In addition to dark side points and affection points from his companion, the sorcerer has earned a few social points. Accumulate enough of these and you'll have access to unique items and equipment. A pair of sand people stands between the players and the mural, but our team makes quick work of it. Now that they've retrieved the information from the mural, our heroes must decide what to do with it. And it looks like they've decided to cover their tracks. Now that the heroes have examined the mural, they need to head back to the Imperial base. Rather than take the long trek across the sand dunes of Tatooine, the sorcerer decided to quick travel to the location. Quick travel is an ability all classes have that will instantaneously transport them from anywhere on the planet back to the last point they bound themselves to. Hail, check on Keeler and the others. See if they figured out anything with the artifact. I'll brief everyone later. We've been waiting for word. Any sign of Darth Silva? Trust me. You don't want that man back. So, he really didn't make it then. Damn it! We all felt it, but we weren't sure. We're not blasted Sith. Without Silva, we're just archaeologists with guns. Without him, this whole expedition falls apart. Fall to pieces later. First, you'll help me obtain Zerka's secrets. I know where to find the Zerka base. Respectfully, my lord, I can't just turn my team over to you.
The artifact has been activated, and now an ancient evil threatens to consume the research facility and everyone within. The scenario you've just watched is only a single part of a larger story arc, and one of the numerous tales waiting to be experienced in the Old Republic. In order to see all of it for yourself, you'll have to play the game and explore the galaxy. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs>